This is the head office of African Bank in Midrand. We were here a couple of months ago talking to Leon Kokenis, the former chief executive. We went into the call center. We spoke about collections. We spoke about the problems. We spoke about an impending crisis. Leon Kokenis at the time, remember, said he's seen this all before. Let's just remind you as to what the ex-boss said the last time we were here. I can tell you that we have been, we, we, are, we are constant in the marketplace. The one thing we are known for by our customers is that we're always there. Uh, we've been through these cycles before. Uh, it's just today there's a, there's a here and now cycle. We've seen the cycle in the past in 2000. We've seen it again in 2007. So one's just got to remain very focused on the long term. Uh, there will always be a need for our services in this market by customers. We don't chop and change. We don't come in and go out uh, at a whim. Well, that was the last time we were here. Last Wednesday, Leonka Kenis quit. The bank asked its shareholders for lots of money. Shareholders declined politely. The share price plummeted to virtually nothing. And over the weekend, a curator was appointed to oversee the running of the bank. Now, here at African Bank, it feels pretty much like business as usual. People are beavering away at their desks. The call center is collecting money and is still extending loans. Let's catch up with Tom Winterboer. He's the guy who's going to oversee African Bank for the next while. Tom, Very condolences. Well, thank you. Go. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> go and grab a seat over there. Ah. Oh, now, thank you. Uh, Tom, the, the last time I came in here was about six months ago. This is the head office. Leon Kikinis' office was in here. It's open plan. It was practically empty. Executive directors had jumped ship. Leon Kikinis felt like he was running the place by himself. It's full of people sitting on computers having close conversations. What's going on in what is the executive suite of African Bank right now? Yeah, look, um, you know, we, we obviously have the executives out here and, uh, you know, they're continuing. I think it's very important that we, we, we have them on board um, and, you know, and, and really try and make the best of where we are. Then we have a few people of our own team. We, we have brought out one or two people from our UK office that's been involved in this sort of thing before and specialists in the area. And then have some help of some of our, uh, you know, local uh, partners and, and, and managers. Um, but, you know, we would expect to lose some of them as we go through the process. You know, when you step in the first day, as I did on Monday, uh, it's just hard to know exactly how many people you need and who you need. Uh, but we'll be losing some of those during the week uh, and then just keep the people essential to really help us on this, on this route forward. Explain the mechanics of this to me. Last Wednesday, uh, African Bank comes out with two big announcements. One is a profit warning, well, three big announcements, a profit warning, a recapitalization request of its shareholders and the resignation of the long-standing chief executive, Leon Kirkinis. From there, um, we see the share price halve on Wednesday. We see it uh, collapse to virtually nothing uh, on Thursday. It doesn't do particularly well on Friday. Um, at what point do the cogs of state start to turn to your appointment as curator? You know, you know, a few days earlier than that, but there's been interaction, you know, by the, uh, you know, by the Saab with the, you know, the private sector. Um, and then on Friday, there was a meeting at the Saab with, you know, with private sector um, uh, and, 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 and myself and others uh, involved with us here. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the request for, for a curatorship came through. Uh, and we then t it took it from there. Uh, you know, things were formalised during the rest of the weekend, and uh, got my letter at, in fact, ten to four on uh, on Sunday afternoon. Mm. But yeah, uh, so 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 that's sort of you know just the broad sense of events. But obviously, lots of interaction. Firstly, by the regulator with African Bank, and uh, sort of almost eighteen months, I understand, mm. before that. Uh, but, you know, I certainly came out to, to African Bank for the first time on, on Saturday just to meet with one of the executives, spent a bit of time here on Sunday. Um, but I think it's a positive solution uh, in terms of, of curatorship. It's seen as a holding thing. Curators is meant to do three main things. The one is to look after depositors and creditors. Secondly, after employees. And then thirdly, just, you know, this responsible as, you know, all other bankers for the soundness of the banking system. So I think it's seen by many as a, as a very positive step forward, uh, taking a good, you know, the good part of the bank yeah. and good part of the book out and, and, and trying to build something from there. What we have is essentially two African banks right now. We've got the bad African bank and the good African bank. Bad African bank is under your control, but it, the assets are ring fenced on behalf of the state. They have paid 7 billion rand for 17 billion rand worth of bad debts. The other part 
part is a consortium of five banks and the PIC, which also you are in charge of the curatorship of that as well. Surely the aim is to get that up and running and operating without your oversight as quickly as possible. Yeah, I think just a bit of clarity. If mm. you look at the structure very briefly, so you've got you know, Able at the top as the holding company, then three main subsidiaries being African Bank One, Stangen the next one, and Ellerine's Holdings the next one. Uh, Ellerine's Holdings then obviously with uh, you know Ellerine's Furnitures in it, and that's where the business rescue is. And that's all ring fenced. And, and that's, that's ring fenced, and yeah. that is out of it. Curatorship at the African Bank level. So in terms of what I do as curator of African Bank at this stage, looking after everything, go both good book and bad book. Uh, so at the moment has not been ring fenced. The, the the bad book will be identified, uh, but the intention is to run both good and bad book going forward. Even though the bad book would be owned by the Saab, you know, seamlessly as you know as one, uh, but clearly identifying the customers, you know, who are going to be in the in, in the bad book. Uh, but I don't think customers will necessarily know if they're mm. in the good or the bad book, and 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 no doubt collections will be, you know will continue, you know, people have borrowed money under certain contractual uh, arrangements and those monies are due. And clearly, you know, things like the you know, credit bureaus and, you know, if people aren't, you know, servicing their debt, you know, still go through there. But I mean, clearly African Bank would want to maintain the relationships with their, with their customers. Um, as curator, are you a de facto chief executive? Or your role is to run the business, to assess the risk, to continue the lending operations, of course, because there's got to be a sustainable business at the end of this process. What do you know about micro-lending? You know, I think there are a lot of people, firstly, you know, you know, I mean, you know I've been in, involved in the banking mm -hmm. industry for a long time. You know, in terms of micro-lending, um, you, know, you know, we have people that are helping us, you know, clearly the, the, you know, the current executive is still, still here and helping. Um, and, and really, you know, working it from that side, I'm getting people from outside. I'm meeting with the first one tomorrow that knows the industry quite well that I'll use as a special you know, consultant um, and, and, you know, sort of well-respected individual. Um, and so I think it's not a, a this is not a one-man show. I think it's really using a team of people uh, and trying to come up with the best thing and, and getting a, a good viable bank out of it. How long does this process take? How long, is, how long do you envisage curatorship to be? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, one's got to be very careful not to be over optimistic. Um, you know, I certainly think, you know, part of the process is sort of a first bit dealing with, you know, the, the bondholders and everyone else uh, and, and finalizing some of that together with coming up with a, with a plan about three months and then getting everything through the, you know, necessarily other, you know, procedures and, and, and uh, you know, getting a listing going for the good bank. So I think about three to six months all in all. But yes, you know, That's at this stage... It's massively optimistic, considering Sambo, I don't think, is yet wrapped up, and this is 12 years ago. I think this is very different mm. from Sambo, you know. I think there is a solution on the table in terms of the consortium uh, standing behind it. I think it's really taking what is there, taking the good stuff, you know, revisiting the business model and taking something positive forward. So I think it's very different, um, you know, and hopefully, and you know, we, we can do it. There will be a recapitalization of that good bank at some point in the future. Will it be a public recapitalization? Will former shareholders of African Bank, or people who, I suppose, are still shareholders until um, the, the death knell is finally signed, will they be given an option at some point in the future to participate in a capital raising should they choose to follow their rights? Yeah, look, the intention is, I mean, so, so you know, the, the consortium are underwriters. So with the, you know, you've got underwriters, you'll obviously, uh, you know, want to go for a listing and in that listing the intention is to give existing the shareholders uh, the opportunity to participate but clearly you know one's got to come you have to come up with a good business case and uh, you know we, we will be working on that you know one's got to obviously have a plan for the new bank um, you know and we're getting some help around that uh, you know say from outside uh, people that's been in the industry um, and still working in the industry, but not executive. Uh, so I think we've just got to really get some something down on paper and, and, and that's workable in consultation with the current executives and other role players. Um, Leon Kikinis doesn't come back through the front door, I assume? He's resigned, he's gone? Leon has resigned, yes. Okay, so he's gone. Does he come back and consult? Does he come back and help? Have you made an approach? Has he offered to assist? Leon and I haven't, uh, you know, haven't spoken. Uh, you know, I think we, Would it be you know, we had a joint meeting. Um, Look, at this stage, I think, you know, I respect Leon's privacy, uh, you know, and in time one may well, you know, think how to take it forward, but I respect his privacy, I respect his decision, and, uh, 
you know, really work from that basis. What happens to the Board of African Bank? Uh, the Board of African Bank, in terms of the curatorship rules, um, you know, ultimately report to me. So one would once again want to use the, you know, the insights and so on in terms of the process going forward. Mm. What's your impression of this business so far? It's, uh, I know it's day three, um, but you would have garnered some sort of impression as to whether or not this is essentially a good business that just got caught in a cycle that went against it. I think that, that, you know, that's very much it. Clearly wrong decisions were made. You know, the cycle isn't, you know, isn't in the bank's favor at the moment. You know, but one would like, I mean, there are more than 5,000 employees, um, you know, and committed people, uh, and, and really want to make sure that we try and get, you know, get and do the best for them. So, you know, I think, uh, I think the executive's been very supportive up to now. I mean, we've, you know, we have meetings. In fact, on Monday, we had three meetings as to sort of really getting things going. Um, but I think there's a good business, they're good people, and I think it's just making the best of it, you know, going forward in terms of a good business model. Can you preserve the jobs? Because that would have been foremost in the Reserve Bank's mind, no doubt, as part of the curatorship process. G let's get the jobs protected. 5,000 is a lot of people, a lot of families. The, the, the amplifier effect of that could be as many as 50,000 people um, impacted by the livelihood that comes out of this bank. Yeah, no, that's absolutely huge, and at the moment there are no immediate plans to do anything around that. So, you know, we would try and keep people, you know, in, in their current jobs and current positions, um, but really want to make sure we get the good business guys going forward. But there's enough here for a solvent business to continue operating. Curatorship happening in time is possibly um, the timeliest curatorship because this meant the assets weren't denuded to the point where you'd have a Samba situation where you just write everything off. Well, I think that's what it is. You know, I think it's a positive uh, solution to it. Um, and, and the intention is really to try and, and, and move it and turn it around as quick as possible. What happens to your day job at PwC? Um, I haven't, uh, I've put some arrangements in place <laughs> during the course of Sunday night. Mm -hmm. I must say, you know, the people at PwC have been very, very supportive. Um, uh, but clearly, you know, had to make some other arrangements for that. In the meantime, you know, make another assessment in terms of, you know, we clearly need to attend some of the things now just as mm -hmm. to how to best go forward. But certainly a lot of support from that side. Thank you, Tom Vinterburg, the curator of African Bank Investments Limited. He assumes that within the next three to six months, you'll be able to get some of the mess sorted out to get the good part of African Bank listed again on the JSE to raise capital and to continue operating as a regular business. That's it for tonight with Bruce Whitfield. Thank you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, bye-bye.